What is up gang and welcome to a quick episode of Inspired By, a series where we look at the musical trends past and present so that you can understand the techniques used to make better music. My name's Will and I make a plethora of music under the moniker Hush Child. I just wanted to say a real quick thanks to us surpassing 2,000 subscribers. It's absolutely mind-boggling in the short space of time that I've been on the platform and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. However, I was looking at my analytics and more than 80% of you that watch my videos aren't currently subscribed. So if you wanna see this community grow and help out the channel, make sure you've hit that button and let's beat that algorithm. Make sure to hit that bell icon if you wanna find your way back for any reason and leave a comment. Let me know what you wanna see in future videos. Now I have to quickly apologize today because I had another video planned but my schedule just got on top of me a little bit and I'm a little bit behind with today's originally planned upload. So I've quickly put together a top 10 tips, things that I use in everyday composition and beat making that speed up my workflow that I thought would be helpful to you guys. So apologies again for the kind of choppy editing, but I hope that some of these tips help you out. If it did, make sure to leave a like and I'll see you guys next week for a video that I'm super excited about. So tip number one for speeding up your workflow in Ableton is something you might have noticed if you came from another DAW first and then moved to Ableton. In other DAWs, you're able to select a track and immediately perform with whatever MIDI device you have on that track. For whatever reason, in Ableton, you have to select record arm first. And I've always found that a little less intuitive. So all you have to do is go to your library folder, find your preferences folder, Ableton, and then the latest updated version of Ableton that you have. And you're gonna create an options.txt file to do this. Now, if you're using Mac, the way to do this is to create a text edit document. In this text edit document, you're gonna write dash, enable arm on selection, and then go to format in text edit and select make rich text. And you can save this into your live 10 folder. Make sure that you've called it options.txt. When you close Ableton down and reopen it, you'll be able to cycle through the selected tracks and it will automatically arm on selection. Tip number two, creating notes on plugins or for your project. To be able to do this in Ableton, all you have to do is right click on the title of a device and then edit info to text. This is gonna pop up in the bottom left. Here, you can create whatever note you want on that device. It also works for MIDI clips, which I think makes a great opportunity for you to create a note for later on. Make this thing louder, don't forget to add a compressor, things like that. Okay, so tip number three is super quick and easy. I often see producers grabbing the ends of files and creating their fades manually. You can do this in a much easier, quicker way, and that's by highlighting the area that you want and pressing Option Command F. This is gonna create an automatic fade out or fade in on your desired clip. Tip number four is kind of a two for one tip. Make sure that you've got oversampling turned on. To do this, grab your EQA and drag it into the device window. Then right click on the title and turn oversampling on. I'd advise right clicking this again afterwards and saving it as the default preset. Now you might be asking me, what is oversampling? Oversampling is basically high quality mode. It'll do twice the work in your EQ and make everything super fine tuned. Side note, you can also do this with the glue compressor. Tip number five, create a go-to effects rack. What I mean by this is creating a rack of the things you use in most of your projects. You can see in mine, what I've created is an EQ8, OTT and utility with mono on. In the EQ8, I've already got oversampling turned on, but I've also got a high and low pass ready to go as well, as well as nodes for where I generally cut and boost frequencies. Whilst we're looking at the EQ, tip number six, assign some macros to your MIDI devices as well. To do this, press Command M, choose your frequency, and then choose your leftmost knob on your hardware MIDI device. What you've just done is create a high pass filter. If you repeat that process, choose a new frequency and do it to the rightmost knob of your hardware MIDI device. You can create a low pass filter as well. Again, this just speeds things up a tiny bit. And let's be honest, it makes music making a little bit more fun and hands-on as well. Tip number seven takes us away from Ableton for a second and enables us to open multiple windows at the same time. I use an app called Moom, but there's many like it for Mac. 
Moom allows me to open multiple windows at the same time. The helpful thing about this means that I can have something open for inspiration whilst I'm beat making, or if I'm doing a writing session via Zoom, I can also have my DAW window open as well. Whilst we're talking about multiple windows open, I enjoy having multiple plugin windows open as well. Much like having record arm off, Ableton has some other strange presets in my opinion as well. So what I like to do is go to live, preferences and plugins. And at the bottom, there's three on off functions for plugin windows. I like to have auto hide plugin windows off and multiple plugin windows on. What this means is that if I'm EQing two instruments, for instance, a bass and a kick drum, I can have both EQ windows open and analyze the frequencies of both whilst adjusting one. Super, super handy. A quick one for number nine is color coding with the number keys. You might have seen in previous projects, I have go to effects and go to instruments. I do this by finding the instruments that I use in most projects and then hitting the number one or the number two to assign it to an automatic folder on the left hand side. I rename this and I call this go to instruments and go to effects. Number 10 is automatically creating a simpler device with your sample. If you press Command, Shift and T, you create a new MIDI device. And if you drag your chosen sample straight into the device window, it will automatically create a simpler device. You don't have to choose simpler and then choose your sample. I hope these 10 quick tips helped you out, guys. I hope you found something new in there. As always, leave a comment to what you'd like to see in future videos. Like if you've learned something new. Let me know if you'd like to hear more of my quick tips in Ableton or what you'd like to see in future videos. As always, I'll see you guys next time.